It's a train whistle. <laughs> kind of. All Hol right. The holodeck malfunction. There is a train that just came through here. Okay. Yeah, let's uh, kick this off. All right. Let's kick it off. Okay. So we got a whole bunch more particle boards. We had the kits before and some of the packs. Now we have the individual boards. So this is the particle mesh argon. It's uh, the new particle board series. This one comes with the NRI52840. It's a Bluetooth LE pl mesh plus Wi-Fi chip. So you see there's two antenna spots, one for Wi-Fi and one for Bluetooth. Um, so this board is the BLE plus Wi-Fi, sorry, the mesh plus Wi-Fi chip. And if you noticed, it's Feather compatible. Um, the new particle boards are all compatible with the Feather standard. All Feather all the time. All Feather all the time. So if you want to uh, use the new particle mesh with their like awesome um, online system, their IoT system for managing data and their mesh networking stuff, you can use that with our hardware. Another good example, if you do open source and you do a good job, the standards um, kind of just happen. Now Feather is an open standard. People can use it. You'll see lots and lots of Feather board. Speaking of. Speaking board. of. Here's another one. We've got the Boron LTE. This is the cellular enabled one. So it's got an NRF52840 again in that feather form factor. But on the bottom, it's got a cellular module. It's an LTE module. And uh, I believe Particle is the, uh, the virtual network for it. And it's in the US right now. Um, check the Particle page to um, see if that's been updated. Because I know that they're doing some stuff on launch. And they'll do stuff later. So this is LTE, um, which is the, you know, the new uh, uh, IoT cellular network. Um, it's more modern than 2G and 3G. Make sure you've got coverage in your area. But uh, it's more futuristic. You know, eventually 2G and 3G will be sunsetted. LTE is going to be here for quite a long time. So if you can use it, use this for cellular. And this is the Xenon. So this is the kind of the, the most bare bones one. It only has the NRF52840. Um, again, still feather shaped. It's using their mesh network. Um, uh, you can use it with their cloud system and of course you can use the Wi-Fi or cellular uh, boards that we just shown with these to create advanced mesh networks that send data through a gateway um, using the onboard radio so all these particle boards you know we have a, also a bunch of kits um, yeah, want to get to those? Yeah, have, let's get... Because we have... The, I'm putting these in order. So we have these packs and then we have another board. I know. We have so many. Okay, I think so we just, we'll just kind of talk about them as a group. Um, we have a pack. I believe this is the Boron uh, LTE pack. Um, so you get one Boron, sorry, we get one Boron LTE, which is your network gateway, and then you get two Xenons. So you have like, you know, three boards, two of them are in a mesh network, a third is receiving from that mesh network as well, and uploading to cellular. And of course, you get breadboards and cables and battery pack. Um, it's another pack. This is a kit, I think this is also the Boron LTE, comes with battery, breadboard, antenna, kind of everything you want. So the, the previous ones we showed were just the boards, the very bare bones. But you know, if you want to get started quickly, you want to come with an LED, with a sensor, um, with a battery, an antenna, um, you get these little kits, a, little, a couple dollars more, but you'll get um, going much faster. And, then here and is this the is the Boron 2G 3G. So in addition to the LTE, you might be in an area or in a country where you don't have LTE um, cellular access. The Boron 2G 3G um, has a U-block cellular modem that works on 2G or 3G, either one network. So it's much more universal and a lot more places have that. Um, I will say 2G is you know, kind of being sunsetted. It's still available, but there's no promise. 3G is around for quite a while. Again, if you can do LTE, do it. But if you can't, 2G, 3G are a really good cellular network alternative. Okay. So all of those together, they all work with each other. You can mix and match them, you know, add cellular, add Wi-Fi, make a mesh network. Uh, this is you know, the new particle offering. Very exciting to see it from them. And of course, it works with all of our feathered boards. Mixed up. Okay, this is an add-on for the Pi Cloud board, which is not feather compatible. It looks kind of similar, though. Um, this is the Pi Scans, a, a sensor and RFID NFC board uh, for the, all the PyCom modules. So these are like MicroPython, Python, ESP32-based boards um, from the PyCom, which is different than PyCon. It's PyCon with an M. Um, so yeah, this one has uh, battery charging, serial, uh, I think accelerometer, light sensor. Um, but most interesting, it has an RFID and NFC chip, and so. Uh, that little green thing, that's an NFC antenna. You can plug that in so you can have it react to cards or tags um, or do other RFID NFC stuff using this extra chip. Okay. This is an updated product, but it's updated enough I wanted to mention it. This is uh, more MicroPython. You know, this is the MicroPython a trend. LCD add-on for the Pi board. Um, and, you know, you can see here it has a, a TFT screen. I think it's 1.8 inch. 
1.6 inch with a resistive touchscreen. Um, but if you notice, it looks kind of similar from the top. It works just the same. But if you look on the bottom, there's these two uh, SMD connectors. Um, so this, I believe, is going to be compatible with the upcoming um, D series. So they kind of updated this in preparation for that. And it's also apparently a little bit faster. Okay. If, if for some reason you missed out on the last Adabox 10, uh, the Rainbow Trellis, and you're just like, man, I really wish I'd picked that up. You can now. We have a couple of Ada boxes in the store. You don't get free shipping. You don't get some of the extras. Um, you don't get the secret delivered to your door the moment it comes out. So you have to wait a while. But you can pick it up. Uh, and then, of course, don't forget to subscribe to Ada Box. You'll get all the goodies from now going forward. But um, this uh, Rainbow Trellis gets you a Circuit Python board with four by uh, eight. Um, squishy elastomer buttons. Uh, we had tons of great projects, music uh, projects, um, keyboard projects, lighting, um, all sorts of good stuff from uh, this Ada box. So this was definitely the best ever. Um, subscribe to get the next one, which you'll also love, and then pick this one up if you missed it. Got a couple of JST four pin and three pin cables. Um, these are pretty quick, so you know we'll just go through them. This is a four pin JST to alligator clip. So you can see it's got black, red, white, green. Um, and you can use it to attach uh, some of our boards that have JST 4-pin stemma connectors to something like a Circuit Playground Express or maybe a micro bit. We also have a version that's the matching polarity. So this is a socket and it has wires on the ends. This is for more for people who are like, I wanna make some custom uh, jig or attach to that alligator clip cable. We just thought this would be handy. We've been building some projects that'd be useful so you can meet with JST 4-pin connectors. And we also have these in three pin cable type. So this one is a power ground signal, three pin socket. And um, we also have the alligator clip version of this as well. We've also got an update for the Pimeroni uh, Picade console. So, you know, they have the all in one arcade one that's like got the screen, everything built in, but maybe you just want to run it on your own TV. Um, also just a nice rugged DIY build, uh, no soldering required. Um, you got uh, six buttons at top, a joystick, two buttons on the side, an on-off switch. You pop in uh, Raspberry Pi 3, and uh, it mounts nicely. You attach everything together using their hat um, to, to add uh, audio effects, as well as um, all the buttons and joystick and all that good stuff. Plug it in, put it together, and now you can you know play RetroPie on any TV screen you've got. All you need to add is a Raspberry Pi SD card and an HDMI cable. I also got uh, just a, a quickie. Uh, this is the uh, Feather M0 Wi-Fi. We had a couple with some um, stacking header solder on, so we thought we'd pop them in the shop. If you don't want to solder on headers, you want to get started with Feather uh, and the M0 Wi-Fi. This is a, a great board to um, do wireless projects with. We, we like the M0. It's a nice rugged chip. Um, this is supported in Arduino. It doesn't have CircuitPython support, but in Arduino it works quite well. Okay. And the star of the show tonight besides you, Lady Ada, in our community is... Thank you, uh, Conductor Phil. It's I'm the engineer and you're the conductor. We've got the Grand Central. I'm actually just shovel coal. <laughs> it's true. Coming into town. Well, that's why the board's black, right? Uh, coming into town, we got the Grand Central. We've been teasing this for a while, and we wanted to you know, get it out into the world. So we, we made a small batch, and we had some beta users pick some up. We're going to be making more. Uh, but it definitely, they are being made, and, and we'll, we'll, we're notifying groups of people who've signed up. Uh, we, we couldn't notify all, like, 1,000 of you because there would have been a, a very unhappy people because we only had, like, 50 boards to, to launch. But we're going to be making hundreds and thousands more, so we're just getting started. Uh, just letting you know that if you're wondering why it's out of stock. Um, so the Grand Central M4, maybe we'll um, go to the overhead because this is a pretty epic board here. So, um, yeah, so it's... It's the largest Circuit Python compatible board we've got. It's also one of the largest um, Arduino compatible board we've made. It features the Sandy 51. Um, it's a 120 megahertz processor, Cortex M4. It's got like DSP instructions and random number generators and, and a cache. Um, it's a really wonderful chip. It's got one megabyte of flash, 256K of RAM. So it's, it's just can do anything really. You stuff any data you want in RAM and you can process it quite fast. Um, the SAMD21 didn't make a chip with this many pins. So we couldn't make a mega shaped one. The only the SAMD51 finally came out with a 128 pin chip, which we needed. We needed that many pins to have all the pins do something. 
So we've got 70 GPIO total. Uh, we've got 16 analog inputs, two analog outputs, um, tons of timers, PWMs. I think it's got eight circoms. So you can have eight I squared C, I SPI, and UART connections. You put eight megabytes of SPI flash on there, which you can use in Arduino or in CircuitPython to hold your code. There's a debugging uh, port right here if you want to uh, connect your J-Link or um, that Mel ICE. Micro SD, a micro USB for um, data upload and debugging. You got your standard, you know, five to 12 volt uh, DC jack, and we added an on off switch so you can easily turn it on or off. We had a little bit of space, so we thought we'd add a SD card. You know, a lot of people use these large boards for driving uh, CNC devices or 3D printers, and so having an SD card slot could be really handy for storing files on it. Built in NeoPixel for status. Um, LEDs as usual, power supply as usual, and just like a ton of pins. Um, it's a three volt uh, logic board, so it's not gonna be a perfect drop in replacement for a mega, but you know, given that the Dewey didn't you know, really quite launch very well, and, and I don't, that it had a bunch of problems, I never got I2C working very well on the Dewey. We think that this is kind of the next step up from a mega. So if you've, you, know, you like the mega, but you're like, well, I want more and I want it faster, because the mega was only running at 16 megahertz. So this is running at 120. Um, and it's got caching and it's, it's just super, super fast. And that's not even including all, all the extra Cortex M4 speed ups that it's got. It's, it's just blazing fast. And uh, you get now all the pins to use with it. So we've got CircuitPython and Arduino support for this. Um, even though it seems like a really big deal, it's just a really big Metro M4, and we've had that out for you know at least six months. So we're kind of excited to see what we'll do with it. Um, you know, it's got this beautiful silk screen on the back. This is the um, the ceiling of Grand Central Station. So if you go to New York uh, and you go through Grand Central, if you look at at the top of the roof of Grand Central, you'll see um, this graphic, which Philby has adapted for um, the Grand Central silk screen. Got that train theme, but it's just it's just grand and it's yeah. central. So toot toot, check it out. We're making lots more, it's very exciting. Um, we'll, we'll definitely be in the next couple of weeks, we'll be putting lots more in stock. Uh, this is beta. Um, we've already found a couple little silkscreen bugs that we want to fix. Um, but you know, I think the hardware's pretty good, so try it out. Maybe build a 3D printer with it or a CNC and let us know how it goes. Honk it. <laughs>